Hey, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to um, another Radio Chat episode. Today, um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about radio more than kind of showing off radios, although I'm really surrounded by them here. Um, to talk a little bit about AM radio, because, um, uh, you know, there are different parts of the radio hobby, um, which are... Um, you know, little niches of the radio hobby, and uh, certainly shortwave is uh, is a big component of that. And I'm a big fan of shortwave, um, obviously. Uh, FM, FM DXing, um, all kinds of different things, um, utility work, that kind of stuff. Um, but I'd like to talk today about uh, AM listening, or more specifically, medium wave, or AM broadcast band uh, listening, and that's. Uh, some of what I've been doing most of lately, um, and a lot of my gear is kind of, kind of geared toward that. Um, a couple things about um, AM broadcast band listening, or you know, just kind of shorthand, it would be AM radio listening, is that um, well, first of all, you know, the question is who listens to AM radio? It's on your dial. It's almost every car has an AM radio. Who listens to it? Well, obviously, plenty of people listen to it. Uh, and there is a lot of interesting programming, a lot of talk, a lot of news, sports, some music, um, foreign language, even domestically. So there's a lot of interesting things to listen to. But the, uh, you know, the fact is, is that we are swimming in um, these these frequencies on, on the AM uh, broadcast band. They're all over the place, uh, and any particular any frequency on the band has literally dozens of stations within the United States alone which operate on that frequency. Uh, many of them are low power and many of them you'll never be able to hear unless you're in that locality, but uh, sometimes you can, and especially the higher powered ones, you can listen to at great distances depending on the time of the day and depending on the conditions. So it can be a hobby, it certainly is a hobby of its own, to try to find those signals and listen to them and try to sort them out. Um, the nice thing about it is you don't really need real expensive equipment. Um, I've been playing around with this radio, which I've got it all plugged in. This is the, the one I've been uh, listening to most recently, the Texan PL360. Uh, and it's a nice little portable job. You can take it just about anywhere. What makes it really nice for uh, listening on medium wave is it has an AM radio antenna input on the top. This is, uh, just to give you a quick idea, I have terrible, um, predictably terrible reception in, here in my basement for, um, for medium wave. So this is what I would get without an external antenna. Nothing. Just a lot of static, a lot of internal, you know, radio noise within the house. Uh, but I've got it hooked up to the Sea Crane uh, twin coil ferrite, the element of which is actually in the backyard. And that enables um, the signal to get imported here. And uh, it's tunable and it's just makes that portion of the hobby much, uh, much easier. The broadcast AM signals are harder to uh, to get certainly indoors and certainly if you're in a uh, a steel framed or a, a concrete or a brick structure they're not going to penetrate that so you need an outdoor antenna but the radios don't have to be uh, let me turn this off the radios don't have to be complicated and in fact um, one of my favorites is well, I got lots of favorites of course we have up here the um, Panasonic 2200, which is famous for its medium wave capability. Uh, I'm not running that today. I've got other ones. But you can do some nice medium wave listening on something as simple as this. This is uh, a Grundig Mini 200. Uh, it's, you know, I was listening to a station last night from Ontario, I think, which uh, just outside of Detroit, uh, just about four o'clock in the afternoon, which is you know, I think a little unusual. Um, it's a, it's, it's not a noisy radio. It, it stations pop.
pop in pretty well. It's fun, and you can do that while you're walking around the neighborhood, you know, trying to find stations. Here's a, another something I picked up recently, which I'm not real fond of yet. Um, but there are plenty of radios. Um, you can do it with a clock radio, um, a cheap, rel relatively cheap. Sometimes you'll be surprised at what a, a cheap radio can do, especially at night when all of those signals are booming in from all over the country. Uh, they can be a lot of fun to listen to. In fact, my introduction to the radio hobby really came about listening to AM broadcast band on the, the a clock radio that I received when I was like 15. I think I got it for Christmas. And I realized on AM radio at night, you hear all over the place, uh, stations from uh, Chicago and St. Louis and uh, Atlanta, all over the place. And, you know, at the time, that was a pretty big deal. Now, that might not be so amazing to, to people anymore, especially now that you can listen to things literally around the world in perfect clarity on the computer. Uh, but there is a romance about it. There's something about these signals that are uh, difficult to capture and uh, uh, require a bit of challenge. It's kind of like fishing. You know, you can go to the store and buy a big fish, you know, from anywhere in the world. But to actually go out w with a with a hook and a line and, and to find it and catch it yourself, well, that's that's kind of special. That's that's magical. And that's uh, that's really part of the attraction for me for AM radio. So, um, again, uh, if you're a newbie to the to the hobby uh, you don't know uh, much about it. Find a find an AM radio, um, a decent one. Give it a try. Turn it on at night. Walk around. Move. The, the thing about AM radio is very directional. Sometimes, if you're not picking up something, you just have to move the radio a little bit, and you know you find some pretty interesting things. So sometimes at night, I'll be outside and I'll be, uh, you know, kind of floating this thing in the air, trying to pick up a signal. Uh, if you really want to get a little bit more fancy, you can get something like this, which is an AM loop antenna, which is a tunable thing. Um, and the nice thing about um, this particular radio, this Texan, is you can uh, plug it right into the top, and you can, uh, you know, you can set this outside uh, or a table or something, or you can kind of move it around outside and really home in on the signal that you want. So um, it's it's really a lot of fun and uh, it's a nice little niche part of the hobby. And um, I've got more videos on that. If you check out my channel. You can, uh, you can find some more where I'm using uh, this antenna. I'm using ones that I built. I'm using uh, this uh, external antenna to kind of tune in some signals. You spend a lot of time listening to static, but you're listening to that little hint of that station far away that's just barely coming in. And when you can capture that, there's great satisfaction in that. In addition to all the other uh, interesting things that you can listen to for their own for their own sake. So I hope you enjoyed this little video on uh, what's so special about AM radio, and I hope that maybe it encourages you to explore uh, that part of the radio hobby a little bit more. Well, until next time.